There are calls for an independent probe after the Forestry Commission denied claims in an investigative report that its officials are taking bribes to allow the illegal export of rosewood. The report by U.S.-based not-for-profit organization Environmental Investigation Agency claimed, among others, that the director of the Wildlife Division of the Commission was taking percentages of uh, the illegally exported rosewood to allow the illegal trade to thrive. Listen to this. Many of the traffickers we spoke to outright admitted to us how they're using bribes. All of this is possible because there's corruption at every level, including the Forestry Commission. I'll go to Nana. He's the, the uh, Nana Educe. He's the overall boss of the scientists. He's in charge. I just go to him. Then I'll just sit down one on one with him. Maybe I go to his house. Maybe we can meet in a drink somewhere. We have some dinner together, some lunch together. Then I'll discuss with him. That's how I do my business. I'll make him understand that maybe on every container I'll give this to him. Give him a percentage. Yeah. This is what we pay him up. There's no requirement on documents. EAA investigators obtained a copy of a CITES permit for Rosewood destined for China, which was issued on the 15th of May 2019, long after the ban on export was issued. We have evidence that this permit was issued even after the container with the logs had already arrived in China. So uh, there you have it, um, excerpt of that investigative piece. And uh, my colleague, who is head of our technology desk, is here with details of that. And we've been following this closely. He actually produced a documentary on this. So you aren't surprised by this investigative uh, piece detailing the illegal export of Rosewood. Tell us Ghana's journey so far. There was a ban but now we are struggling to enforce that ban. Um, five different bans since 2012. Peter Mau, Neil Samuels, Inusa Fuseni, all serving as ministers for land and natural resources have issued the ban. And the latest one on the mm. 12th of March by the current minister, um, that um, uh, 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 Asuma Cheme. There are some other issues that were raised in the report that the first commission in denying that the officials have said they didn't take any bribe or anything like that really did not address, including a claim that there are situations where when rosewoods are seized illegally, uh, they are auctioned back to individuals who are owners of the original log, which is actually a disturbing situation where the claim is that is fueling the said trade. Again, there was a link to the ruling MPP as contained in the report put out by EIA mm. that the permits are being issued to members of the ruling party as a result of political connivance to a certain extent. Again, we didn't see the first commission statement address that. And then the, the, there was another claim in the report that was put out by the EIA that there are situations where when it comes to uh, the auctioning processes for some of these rosewoods, people are able to maneuver the process. And they claim that in one of the cases, um, 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 a, a, a situation of export permit was issued on the 15th of May, which was well after the period when um, the, the ban was supposed to be enforced, and all of this went through auction process, which they felt was completely out of place. That again, the Forestry Commission statement really did not fully address. Mm. And, and, and so we, we know, for example, in, 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 in the ban being placed, that there was a certain permit for salvaging. It looks like that's been taken advantage of. That's the, the whole cracks perhaps of, of, our, of, our, of our situation now. So, so it's a very interesting scenario where the claim by the first commission is that you don't have the right to fell the, any rose wood trees but if you go to the forest and you find wood on the floor you can pick them up and then the questions come up how come are these there? Some of the claims were that these logs were there even before the ban came into force. Some of it was that um, 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 you know they could go down as a result of heavy wind but these are trees that are as old as 100 years and it gets there before then they are mature enough. So there are questions about how come there could be more like rotten rosewoods, wet salvaging that could be resulting in this. But in the latest ban that was announced by the minister, um, he said that um, they are looking forward to enforcing a ban where they are revoking even the said um, um, salvaging permits. Mm. But with the back and forth, 
some of the civil society groups are calling for an independent inquiry. Um, you know, Dr. Clementa Park is one of those who's been leading this call all this while. He, for example, makes the point that um, an independent investigative body, other than the Forestry Commission, actually goes ahead to do the necessary investigation. It's interesting because the Forestry Commission has come out to deny, but says it will investigate. Uh, it's amazing how they are putting the two side by side. Uh, they say the officials have denied um, involvement in any bribery. And you saw that clip. The reference was made to the um, head of the Wildlife Division, um, Nane Duinsia. And in the statement, they say Nane Duinsia has denied any such um, involvement in you know, any bribery scheme. But then the commission says they are still going ahead to investigate. Then it raises the question where the line lies. Are they denying mm. or they actually say that they are not going to look into the matter and come up with the uh, uh, Thankfully, we've got uh, the Forestry Commission's PRO, uh, Madam Joyce of Oriqua, for joining us uh, via live. And you've raised some concerns, so would try and put those questions to her. Thank you so much for your time this morning, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right, so your well, outfit. Good morning, to your good morning to you too. Your outfit is denying and, 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 and saying that your officials say they did not do anything on toward, but you're still saying that you will investigate. So we just want you to reconcile that. It presupposes that you've done some uh, initial investigation. Is it that you're not satisfied and you're going to do a more thorough one? Help us understand. Thank you very much. One second. Yes. Nana Kofi Adunsia was the former executive director of the Wildlife Division. He is on retirement at the moment. So when this issue came up, we quickly called him. A committee was set up to investigate this issue. Now, when we called him, he denied any involvement with any illegal operator. Mm. And he even went ahead to throw a challenge to anyone he, who has a proof of his involvement mm. in any illegality to come forward and prove that. That was what he told us. Now, for BBC or EIA, for EIA to come up with such a report, it means they have also done their investigations. So we have still thrown a challenge to EIA, the individuals involved, to come up with any proof mm. against Nana Edwinsia. When you but then we have mm. so much trust in Nana mm. Edwinsia because he has worked mm. with the Forestry Commission for over 35 years. He rose through the ranks to become the executive director. And if you know what it means to become an executive director in Forestry Commission, you know the sort of people who are able to rise to that position. But we have only three executive directors in the commission. So it means that we have some form of confidence in Nana Edisia, the former executive director of the Wildlife Division. All right. When you say you've thrown a challenge to the EIA, what do you mean? Have you written formally to them or it's something you've just said in the media? No, we haven't, we haven't written officially to them. Nana Edunsia said that he is throwing a challenge to anyone who alleges that he was involved in, in um, collect, bribe collection or certain percentage of the sales, as they put it, mm. from, from illegal operators. Yeah, but, but madam, let me, just, let me just find out from you. Uh, yes. Many people all over the world cited in, and I'm not in any way saying that Nana Edu in Sia is guilty or not, but many mm -hmm. people cited in corruption cases usually hold very high positions of trust uh, uh, before they're either found guilty or otherwise. So just relying on the confidence and trust that you have in him uh, s sounds a bit um, like you may just be sweeping this under the carpet. I am not sweeping it under the carpet. That, that is your observation. I am also speaking from what I know about this man that I'm talking about and the Forestry Commission as an institution. Mm. That is why Nana Edunsia is saying, and the Forestry Commission is also saying, that who has, whoever has any proof of his involvement in any bribery allegation or whatever should come forward with that proof for us to, to see. Mm. Okay. He who alleges must prove. So sure. The person must come forward to prove that on so and so a day. That's a thought went on between uh, myself and Nana Kofi Edunsia in that direction. So the commission says it's going to investigate this. Uh, I, I'm just wondering if you have plans to write to the, the producers of this documentary to give you that particular evidence. And have you in any way seen the documentary in full? Yes, we have. 
Uh, and when are you going to write to the producers to officially respond to your call for them to prove that indeed it is uh, Nana Eduncia who signed that, uh, the documents that they refer to? We haven't seen the documents. We want uh, the physical documents. Exactly. And, and, and that's why I'm asking because mm -hmm. you say you have thrown a challenge to them to prove. Yes, they should come forward with it or they're individual. But, this is, but the Forestry Commission is, is, is you, it's an institution and I, I want to believe that you may want to write formally or uh, put in a formal request as evidence. What if EIA says, well, we don't listen to Ghanaian local news. We haven't even heard you say uh, that we In the we first should. place, we have issued a rejoinder to that effect, which we, we have sent to um, BBC. Okay. We have issued a rejoinder to that effect. So if they have any questions mm. or they have any doubts about it, they can still come forward. Okay. They can come back to us. Okay. Uh, can you just tell us when uh, Nana Edunsia retired? Are you able to give us those details? He retired about six weeks ago. Okay. Or eight weeks ago, yes. Okay. So, uh, yes. so because the, the, the documentary says that as of the 15th of May, uh, that, that letter was signed allegedly, allegedly by him. All right. Now, there was another claim that we, you didn't address in your, in, your, in, your, in your statement, and the claim was that the illegal permits were being issued to NPP members. Would you want to address that now? We didn't see that in your statement. Um, yes, you didn't see that. But then, when we are working at Forestry Commission, we don't look at party affiliations. It's about the individual or the company. If you have all your right documents, you are good to go. Whether you are uh, A, B, C, or G, O, Y, or O, J, K, nobody cares about that. Mm. So for somebody to say that we were issuing the permit to NPP members, in fact, I don't have any records to prove that, and, and I haven't seen anything like that. Mm. I don't think it is true. Okay, let me just find, find out from you. My colleague here, Joseph Opokugapo, has produced a documentary on Rosewood in, in Ghana and the whole issue of it, the, the ban, but people still flouting the ban. It was aired. There was a lot of discussions. Has the Forestry Commission on its own decided independently to even investigate if there are people who may be forging your documents, people who may be taking advantage of the system to uh, perpetrate such acts? Have you independently done that? Please, when was this documentary produced and has it been brought to the Forestry Commission I'm not sure it was brought to the Forestry Commission, but there's been a lot of discussion about it in the airways. And I'm just asking, I, I want to believe that you've heard some of these allegations even before the EIA's uh, statement. So I'm just asking that independently, not investigating this particular one, have you as a Forestry Commission decided to even find out if those claims are true at all? They, they are not true because we haven't had any report of somebody trying to forge our documents. In, in, the, in the case of Rosewood, we haven't had any reports like that. Mm. Otherwise, we would have investigated. Whenever we get such reports, we should quickly move into action to investigate but, but, the, but, but, to get but, to the bottom of the pro, uh, mm. problem. But did you hear if people were actually going into the forest flouting the ban? Are you aware of that? When was that? Now, we've been reporting that through, uh, throughout the, the years. This year alone, uh, my colleague uh, reported of a clash between some uh, families in, 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 in the, somewhere in the Upper West region uh, over yes, Rosewood. We, 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 we heard about it, but then the issue is that most of the time, so Rosewood is found on uh, land, or on people's farms, individual farms, which is outside the jurisdiction of the Forestry Commission. Mm. We don't control the individual farm or individual land where uh, road food are normally found. Mm. All right. I, I'll so have you hold good. on because we are coming back to another issue the Forestry Commission is dealing with now. Uh, okay. But, Joseph, let's just quickly wrap this up. So there's a call for independent probe. Uh, we just heard from the Forestry Commission. In the long run, what do we really hope to see with regards to the felling of Rosewood? That it all comes to an end, which is what virtually all the civil society players in the space are calling for. Otherwise, then it's an endangered species that may 
uh, go extinct to a very large extent. Thank you very much. Joseph Apokugapo is head of our, our Greek and Technology Desk. But uh, let's move on, but stay within the same sector. The condition of youth in afforestation say personnel will begin a sit-down strike tomorrow if government fails to pay their salary arrears uh, owed them for eight months. Over 300 of them picketed yesterday at Jubilee Park in Kumase after police allegedly failed to give them green light for a plant demonstration. Over 65,000 beneficiaries out of initial 15,000 were employed nationwide last year for the Youth in Afforestation module of the Youth Employment Agency. Leaders complain there is no clear-cut government policy on the program. This is not the first time the group uh, has had to protest over unpaid allowances. We've still got uh, the head of corporate affairs of the Forestry Commission, Joseph Rukwafo, to respond to this. All right, ma'am, they claim you don't have a clear cut plan for youth in afforestation. You owe them so much. Uh, why why uh, the arrears? That is, if it's true at all. Yes, it is true. We owe them three months arrears. Not eight? No, it is not eight. Three months. Three months. May, June, July. We've paid April this week. Mm. So they can go to their uh, various banks and check if it has reflected okay and I'm, i know it has but why what so we owe them three months now what happens is that the youth in afforestation program is a fully funded government of ghana program so often when we that the forestry commission gets the green light that funds are available for the payment of their allowances we go through the processing of the uh, funds so it gets to their various individual accounts now, Forestry Commission doesn't get the money, as some of them are alleging that it is in a, sitting in our account and so on and so forth. It goes through a process. You know, with government funds, you just you won't go and collect cash. It will go through a process, and then using the AC system, it hits the account. Mm. Now, what happens is that before you qualify to be paid an allowance at the end of the month, you must have worked for. 18 working days, 18 working days. So every day when you go, you write your name, you sign against it. At the end of the week, you sign against your attendance. So at the end of the month, all these sheets, we call them time sheets, mm. are collected and are sent to Accra, where they are audited. It goes through a rigorous auditing process before payment starts. So that is it, one. Now, because of the way the system is, there is no way they can be paid at the end of every month. Okay. If it's 30th or 31st, maybe they, they will be paid on or before that. No, it cannot happen that way because of All the right. process it goes through. Okay. All right. And then secondly, uh, we are still waiting for funds from the government. As and when funds are available, they will be paid. But I can assure them that they will definitely be paid. We are with government to, to release funds for the payment of the rest of the three months arrears. All right. Also, we have some supplementary lists. These are names which were not paid. You know, they were very genuine mistakes. Let me put it that way. Genuine mistakes. Their names were omitted from the payment sheet um, when collation was going on, you know, when entries were going on, you know, and All some right. other reasons. Okay. So All right. we are making efforts mm. to pay those ones thank you so very much uh, thank you very much for your time uh, th th that was head of corporate affairs at the forestry commission there uh, madame ofori kwa for giving us details of uh, concerns raised by youth in afforestation in kumasi We've got more coming up shortly on News Desk in Business. AGI, a business barometer report, cites high electricity costs as a major challenge for businesses in the second quarter of this year. Darrell Kwal has got details to stay.